Okay, welcome to chapter three, interdependence and the gains from trade. I'm going to be working largely from chapter three, figure one in this video. This will be a two video sequence where we look at a scenario um, before trade and after trade and how trade can make everyone better off. So um, here's the scenario. We have Frank the farmer and Ruby the rancher, and let's assume they're just living you know, out in the wilderness during um, pioneer times, and um, the way they are compensated, uh, the way they survive is calories. Uh, so their calories are how they survive, that's their currency, it's everything to them. And speaking to um, a principle that, uh, the economic principle that the more productive you are, the higher your standard of living, the ounces of meat and the ounces of potatoes that you produce is what you consume, and that determines your standard of living. So, um, Frank and Ruby are not trading, at least not in this exercise. Uh, check the next video for, for when they do. Um, but because our standard of living is so defined by our productivity, let's start there. How productive um, is Frank the farmer and Ruby the rancher? So they're producing two things, meat and potatoes. And we start with their minutes needed to make one ounce because ounces of meat and potatoes is their compensation package, if you will. Uh, calories is all about survival and um, basically how they pay themselves. They survive. Um, let's start with Frank. It takes them 60 minutes to make one ounce of meat. It takes them 15 minutes to make one ounce of potatoes. And I don't know why I'm saying potatoes that way. Potatoes? I don't know. Whatever. Um, Ruby, it takes her 20 minutes to make an ounce of meat. And we notice then that Frank, that Frank is a little slower at making meat. So Ruby has an advantage here. That's called absolute advantage. Ruby, in the time it takes Frank to make one ounce of 60 minutes, Ruby can make three ounces because there's 20 minutes, there's three 20 minute blocks in an hour. So she can make three ounces an hour and he can only make one ounce an hour. We'll talk about that here in a second. Um, then we look at productivity and it takes Frank 15 minutes to make an ounce of potatoes, but Ruby only 10 minutes uh, to make an ounce of potatoes. So if we do some quick math here per hour, uh, it takes Frank, see, four 15 minute blocks in an hour. It he can make four ounces of potatoes in an hour. And Ruby can make, uh, let's see, there's six uh, 10 minute blocks in an hour. So she can make six ounces in an hour. So she can make six and he can make four. So again, Ruby outproduces Frank. So in actuality, Ruby has what we call absolute advantage in both producing meat and producing potatoes. Um, so that's our first key takeaway. Ruby has an absolute advantage in producing both meat and potatoes. Much like the United States, when we start looking at products we make across the world, the United States obviously with, has the technology and the knowledge to make things like biopharmaceuticals. Um, but they could also be the world's leader in making t-shirts. So uh, a little foreshadowing to the second video, just because you're good at making something doesn't mean you should always be the one to make it. So stay tuned for that one. What I wanna do here is let's say, hey, this is pioneer times, it's rough living, it's hard life. Um, let's look at the amount of meat and potatoes they can produce in eight hours. Let's just assume that all they can work all day, their limited scarce resource of time is eight hours in this experiment. So. Uh, we converted these numbers, at least verbally, into what they can make per hour, and now we're going to total it up what they can do in eight hours. So Frank, he was at 60 minutes to make an ounce, so that's an hour, an ounce, an hour, so eight hours, eight ounces. For potatoes for Frank, uh, it takes him 15 minutes, so that means he can make four ounces an hour, so four times eight, so four ounces an hour times eight hours, you get 32 ounces. So in an eight-hour day, he can make eight ounces of meat, if all he does is make meat, or he could make 32 ounces of potatoes if all he does is make potatoes. Now, here's the thing, they're not trading, so they're gonna make some meat and potatoes, so we're gonna meet somewhere in the middle, and we'll get to the PPF here in a minute that'll help illustrate that. Um, Ruby, 
20 minutes to make an ounce, so that means she can make three ounces an hour. Three ounces an hour times eight hours, she can make 24 ounces of meat in an eight hour period. So each day she makes, if she does all meat, no potatoes, she can make 24 ounces. Now for potatoes, she can make 10, or so it takes her 10 minutes to make one ounce of potatoes, given our minutes needed. Um, so she can make six ounces per hour. So six ounces per hour times eight hours, 48 ounces of potatoes. Again, Ruby has an absolute advantage in both. However, these numbers here are maximums. If you spend all eight hours in your frank making meat, you'll make eight ounces. If you spend all eight hours making potatoes, you'll make 32 ounces. If you spend all eight hours in your Ruby making meat, 24 ounces. All eight hours making potato, 48 ounces. But here's the thing, you want meat and potatoes. So you're not gonna spend all eight hours on either one, so let's make some further assumptions there. Now, this is our production possibilities with no trade. Again, this video is on no trade. The next video will be on uh, what happens if they decide to work together. Um, we've got Frank and Ruby in our PPFs. Remember, production possibilities frontier. Okay, we covered that last, last class in chapter two. It's our production possibilities frontier. We have a vertical axis and a, and a, hor and a horizontal axis. Uh, and both of these are the same. We have meat on the vertical axis. So down here is no meat. Up here is a lot more meat. Okay, over here to the left, that's zero potatoes. Over here is a lot of potatoes. So let's look at um, Frank. If he works all eight hours, remember this is what we're doing over here, making meat, he'd be at eight ounces. And that's what that dot right there represents. You see eight ounces, so that's up here. And that's zero potatoes, because we're right here on the horizontal. Now, if he made all potatoes for eight ounces, he can make 32 ounces, which checks out with our calculations over here. Okay, so 32 ounces if he goes all eight hours on potatoes. But we know Frank is gonna want some meat and potatoes, so let's assume he divides his time evenly and works four hours on meat, four hours on potatoes, and he meets in the middle. So if you divide eight and a half, you got four. And if you divide 32 and a half, you got 16. So if he spends four hours on meat, he'll get four ounces a day. If he spends four hours on potatoes, he'll get 16 ounces per day. So going, instead of going eight hours on one and none on the other, he goes four and four and he ends up with four ounces of meat, 16 ounces of potatoes. Now, let's look at Ruby with her PPF. Same thing, we've got meat on the vertical axis, we've got potatoes on the uh, horizontal axis. I feel like a weatherman here, this is awesome. Um, if she goes all meat, this is 24 ounces of meat, but that is zero potatoes. Now, if she goes all potatoes, but zero meat, okay, so that's, if, you, if you're on this line right here, you're at zero meat and all this potatoes, you got 48 ounces of potatoes if you go all in on eight hours of potatoes. All right, chances are she's gonna split her time between the two. Again, they're not trading yet. Let's say she spends four hours on meat, four hours on, on potatoes, and you cut this in half because you're no longer spending eight hours, you cut it in half, you're spending uh, four hours, so you get 12 ounces of meat. Okay, 24 divided by two because eight divided by two is four. 12 ounces of meat, and cut the 48 in half because you're gonna spend four hours, not eight hours, 24 ounces of potatoes. So if she divides her time evenly, she gets 12 ounces of meat, 24 ounces of potatoes. Okay, there I go again with the potato. Um, so again, what are our key takeaways pre-trade? So without trade. Well, all right, so they're, they're making meat and potatoes and they're getting some calories, they're getting some sustenance, uh, they're being compensated for their time and we know how productive they can be now. That's great. We do know that Ruby has an absolute advantage producing both meat and potatoes. She's just better at producing meat and potatoes. Um, just like one country might be better than another in producing a whole plethora of products, usually in the United States, like I say, we, we, could, we could lead the world in biopharmaceuticals and t-shirts if we wanted to. Should we maybe shift some of those scarce economic resources maybe towards things like technology and biopharmaceuticals and let other places make t-shirts? Because in the United States, the cost of what you get is what you give up. If you're producing biopharmaceuticals, you're giving up producing t-shirts, that's not a high opportunity cost. But if you could produce biopharmaceuticals and you decide instead to make t-shirts, you're giving every t-shirt you make, you're giving up maybe life-saving medicine. So that's a pretty high opportunity cost. You have to start thinking about things that way as an extension from chapter two, thinking like an economist. Um, there is a cost associated with what you do not produce. So before trade and assuming they split their time evenly, sorry, 
my, my perfectly economist handwriting here. We're just terrible uh, handwriters. Before trade and I uh, have terrible handwriting, that is. Before trade and assuming they split their time evenly, Ruby consumes 12 ounces of meat, 24 ounces of potatoes, boom. Frank consumes 4 ounces of meat and 16 ounces of potatoes. Boom. Okay. Now, let's set the table for trade, though. Let's set the table for trade. I'm going to read directly from your book. I don't do this a whole lot because I'm assuming you're doing the reading and this certainly doesn't replace it. Let's say one day Frank gets a knock on his door and there's Ruby and she's got an idea. Ruby says, you know what, if we trade together we could be better off. Ruby starts out the conversation with, Frank, my friend, have I got a deal for you? I'm always nervous when I hear stuff start like that. I know how to improve life for both of us. I think you should stop producing meat altogether. And Frank's like, what? I love meat. And devote all your time to growing potatoes. She's asking him to specialize. According to my calculations, if you work eight hours a day growing potatoes, you'll produce 32 ounces of potatoes. True story. If you do all eight hours on potatoes, Frank would make 32 ounces of potatoes. Then you can give me 15 of those 32 ounces and I'll give you five ounces of meat in return. She's proposing a trade here, a barter. <clears throat> in the end, you'll get 17 ounces of potatoes and five ounces of meat every day instead of the 16 ounces of potatoes and four ounces of meat you get now. So 17 and five, and right now he's doing 16, or yeah, he's doing 16 and four. So he does get more ounces, so he's getting more calories, he's getting more meat and potatoes. This sounds like a good idea. Um, so with my plan, you'll have more of both foods. We just confirmed that. Frank, sounding skeptical because, well, he's a male and he's probably thinking, wow, there's a, there's a girl at my door and, you know, we get distracted and honestly, guys, they're just smarter than us. Um, that sounds like a good deal for me, but I don't understand why you're offering. If the deal's so good for me, it can't be good for you. All right, Frank, let's take your shoes off. You're going to have to count your toes. We're going to do some math here. Ruby says, oh, but it is. She's kind of a little bit salesy. That's okay. But suppose I spend six hours a day raising cattle. So she's not going to go eight and zero. She's going to concentrate because she has an absolute advantage at producing both. She's going to produce a little bit of both, just like the U.S. can produce some t-shirts, but they produce a lot more biopharmaceuticals. Oh, but it is, she said. Suppose I spend six hours a day raising cattle and two hours a, a day growing potatoes. So she's going to go six and two instead of four and four or eight and zero um, in terms of productivity. Then if she goes six and two, she can produce 18 ounces of meat and 12 ounces of potatoes. After I give you those five ounces of meat, remember that was her trade, all right, in exchange for 15 ounces of potatoes, I'll end up, here's her payoff, with 13 ounces of meat and 27 ounces of potatoes. That's instead of the 12 ounces of meat and 24 ounces of potatoes that I get now. So I will consume more of both foods than I do now. So she's going to end up with Mm, let's see here, 13 and 27, and over here she had 12 and 24, so she wins too. So can trade make everyone better off? Yes, but guess what? Frank's like, I don't know, I'm not very bright. No, he doesn't say that. I don't know, this sounds too good to be true. Skeptical, okay, it's the world, you need to be skeptical. There's, you know, stuff going on. Ruby says, listen, moron, it's really not that complicated. They don't say that in the book. I'm just adding a little color commentary here. Here, I've summarized my proposal in this simple table. And guess what? I'll summarize that table in the next video, and we will break down how trade can make everyone better off, including Frank and Ruby here. But it's not based on absolute advantage. It's based on something called comparative advantage. Check out the next video for all the information.